everyone and welcome to a Jurassic World Evolution 2 news video. Today, I'm a bit ill, but we're gonna fight through it. So normally what happens, we get like a species profile or as what they call them now, a, a, a field guide. You see, they call it something different, but it's still the same. Uh, but instead of doing it all the time, what they've chosen to do is highlight different things that you can do in Jurassic World Evolution 2. And to be fair, I don't mind that. I think uh, species profiles are a bit boring. Uh, most of the time, it's just like, Chichangosaurus. It's a dinosaur that eats meat. Bye! So the fact that we get to see maybe a little bit more about how the park's actually gonna function is way better. Uh, so they put out this one minute video. And not only that, they put out um, on a website. They, they put on their forums a little bit, explaining a little bit more. So that's what we're going to jump into today. And I have been told that there is raptor jumping in this. So this will be interesting. And I don't know if it's in the video. Hopefully it is. I'd love to see that animation. But let's not waste any more time and jump into it, shall we? Okay, that's playing through the, uh, the speaker. That's not so good. All right, here we go. Let's play it properly this time so I can hear it. <laughs> mm. To ensure the welfare of your prehistoric animals and attract even more guests to your park, two additional enclosure types will be available to house the new avian and marine species. Oh, there's the mystery the aviary Mosasaur. and lagoon enclosures. The aviaries offer modular construction, allowing you to craft dynamic enclosures viewing galleries, and hatcheries, I'm gonna making die. these giant domes the perfect place to safely secure and view your flying reptiles. Interesting. Okay. Lagoons are new, impressive, modular aquatic habitats. They can include a marine hatchery and a viewing gallery. That's the which thing! Which offers a spectacular experience for your guests during feeding time. Oh, we need to break this down. These additional enclosures and animals will offer your parks new opportunities and new challenges. Ooh. Oh, okay. Oh, that was interesting. Right, so before we, you know, well, we'll break down this before we jump into the forum post. So nothing too crazy here. You've got them showcasing a bit more of the decoration. As we can see here in the right, you've got uh, three picnic benches and I think that's a park light. Um, the Avery, um, so, uh, I'd say that's obviously the drink um, kiosk thing. You've got a merchandise and then you've got, I assume, which is probably going to be food. Um, but the interesting thing about this is that you've got... This looks so out of place. Am I the only one that thinks that? You look at these park benches. Could you imagine going to Jurassic World, you know, at a place that costs millions, billions to make, and they've just got some benches that are out in the middle of nowhere, like off the path, that they're not fenced off or anything, they're just by some bushes? Looks really strange, and weirdly, I don't know if they're too small. Do they look small? I don't know, no, they're probably the right size. It's probably just me nitpicking a little bit too much there. But anyway, interesting to see them showcasing some of the decorations. Now, this bit is interesting. Um, when I was making the lagoon, when I got to play, um, I wanted to recreate exactly how it looks like in Jurassic World. You know, multiple stands locked together. Um, I don't know if you can actually do this, because I think I tried it and they have, you know, constraints and stuff. As you can see here, you've got uh, so much of a fence and then it stops and then the next one starts. So if you try to move this other one left a little bit more, it'll go building constraint. Um, them showcasing a little bit more of the decoration. I think there's only three there, I think, three-ish. You've got the light, you've got the, I don't know, bespoke... A uh, sundial looking thing. And then you've got some flower beds. But, God, uh, <laughs> you've got the Tylosaurs here. Uh, and this could be the species that I thought was a Megalodon. Because we saw a fin, um, and I was like, whoa, what's that? But looking at it, it kind of does just look like it could have been a Megalodon. Sorry, it could, could have been a Megalodon. could have been this Tylosaur or Hainosaur or whatever it is. Uh, just because of the fluke on the tail. Um, now, it could have been a case of maybe the, the Mosasaurid, or Mosasaur or whatever, uh, dive down, just leaving the tail visible, because you can see here, it's very obvious that, uh, you know, Mosasaurs are not uh, Megalodons. 
as you can see, this one does dive down a little bit. And it almost does show the tail before it cuts. Uh, another lovely close-up of the Tylosaurs, I think this is. Because you've got the, um, what do you call it? You've got the Safari Tour in the background there. Yeah, this isn't a Mosasaur. I think it's, it's, it's definitely that one we don't know about. It might even have the pattern skin on it. Because I think every dinosaur has one pattern. Um, now a case. Or nowadays, anyway. Um, anything interesting here? I don't think so. You've got some rocks, some shrubs. It's obviously the same park. They're just touring. Um, this is interesting. Like, well, they're sort of showcasing that the Avery can be built differently. But so can the Lagoon be built exactly the same. I guess? Um, I didn't... Now, when I was playing this game, I deliberately didn't mess around with the Avery too much because I wanted to showcase the Plesiosaurs. Um, I think which ended up getting their own showcase species profile anyway. Hey, <laughs> But I did it first! <laughs> um, and in here, I, I've been told that you can actually place trees. Because I did try it with the Lagoon and you couldn't place anything down. So it'll be interesting to see if you can do that um, with the, the Averys. Because it kind of looks like you've got like a log there. Um, I don't know whether it's gonna- Oh, it's a Spinosaur skull! Ah! That's right, it's- So you will be able to make more inaccurate, um, Jurassic World, because the Spinosaur skull was there. Um, it'd be really cool if you could make the Spinosaur skeleton. Um, because this is Jurassic World Evolution. You want to make everything, like the amber, have the amber bit. It's possible that we could get that. Again, there's theories that maybe, uh, challenge mode allows you to unlock certain things. Um, like, um... What is that? Like decorations or buildings or dinosaurs or skins, something like that. Uh, this is interesting. I want to have a quick look at this because at first when I saw it, I thought, oh, Lee Zick these! But it's definitely not. Um, I mean, I can kind of see the two flippers here from the Mosasaur. Yeah, it could be a different Mosasaur because there doesn't seem to be any extra tail. But this could be the thing that I thought was the Megalodon because it's uh, breaching the water but not showing us... Um, what exactly it is, but I can almost make out the shape of flippers here. I mean, it would be flippers anyway, but no, if it was a Lizic, these, it would have way more along a tail, so it's definitely not that. So this is the mystery one. We've seen the Tylosaur thing before. This is the mystery because it doesn't breach the surface as the fin does. Um, but it does look... Like, it could be a Mosasaur, it could be an Ichthyosaur. I know some other people um, said that it could be a giant Ichthyosaur. There was like a Shastasaurus or something like that is one of the giant Ichthyosaurs that you can get. Uh, here's a lovely view, because whenever I looked at the aquarium views, I could never see anything, just blue. So it caught at the perfect time, then. Eh? Um, and here you have the Mosasaur, because it does not have a fluke above it. And you have the other uh, Mosasaur, um, which I don't know what it is. You know, it could be a Tylosaur or anything like that, because the tails are different. Um, but just showing that they can actually coexist together, which is interesting. And then the Mosasaur jumping up for that. And then again, that Hainosaur thing. So they're deliberately not showing us what that dinosaur is. And I'm just realizing, what is this building over here that's got the green on top of it? Could be likely that's a hatchery. I think that could be a hatchery that we're just, you know, because it's so zoomed out or so far away, that the trees are sort of blending together to make a green shape there. Um, and then a final shot here. We have a broken Avery with a Pteranodon just flying around. So this is great because it shows that the Pteranodons are almost in the park. They're not flying out, you know, never coming back off screen. They look like they're flying around. Now, I wonder if they'll be able to interact with carnivores or maybe kill herbivores. I mean, I think we saw some sort of attack animation of Tyrannodons attacking humans. So there's definitely scope for it there. But anyway, that was, that's a lovely little uh, video that you get to see a little bit more of the enclosures. Now on to the forums. If my throat can take it. Uh, welcome back, park managers, to a new entry in our park management guide. In this series of articles and videos, we're taking a deeper look, yada yada yada. Today, we're looking, we're taking a look at three different kinds of dinosaurs and reptile enclosures you'll be building. Uh, land dinosaur enclosures. Your land dinosaurs are kept inside fenced enclosures. Most of them are sociable and get along well with other species, but some will need to be kept to themselves, both for their own safety and the safety of others. Triceratops and stegosaurs should be kept apart, for instance. Why? I don't know, we just needed to make conflict. <laughs> um, there are many types of fences and walls in Jurassic World Evolution 2. 
great to hear. Uh, hopefully there's more. Because one of my biggest gripes is that what they've done is taken Jurassic World Evolution stuff, like the viewing platform um, and the viewing gallery and the tour, uh, which again was DLC. Um, and they're just putting it in Jurassic World Evolution and not adding anything to it. Yes, they've allowed tours to go across paths. But is that what we're praising? Something that probably should have been in the game from the start? Don't know. Even JPOG on the original cover showed like the tour vehicles being able to go uh, inside enclosures and therefore I assume paths as well. I think they could probably go over paths actually. They didn't have a problem with it. Um, but you know, Evolution did have a problem. But anyway, and that was never implemented in JPOG. But it, it, here we go. Um, so where are we? Yes. Um, just what I have to do. From your basic steel fences to concrete and electric fences. Right. So exactly the same as Evolution. Their appearances will vary depending on the era or theming you choose for your parks. And different fences are needed for different dinosaurs. Keeping your dinosaurs happy, oh god, and comfortable is your primary objective. So you'll need to customize their enclosures using plants, food, and water sources, and ground types. Unhappy dinosaurs will grow restless and try to break out. Large theropods, large theropods, theropods like T-Rex and uh, Changesaurus. Interesting. I didn't think Chasasaurus was that big, but anyway, okay. We'll usually try to headbutt fences or gates in order to break them, whereas Stegosaurs and other uh, Theroporans um, will likely use their tails. I thought it says Triceratops, but no, Theropods, okay. Smaller Theropods like Dilophosaurus and Velociraptor will usually try to climb non-electrified fences in order to escape. So, there you have it. You need electric fences to keep in raptors. Which makes absolute sense. And that, I, I mean, wh what are we expecting from that? Probably something similar to JPOG. Again, we're harping, I keep on harping back to it. But JPOG had raptors climbing fences when they, once they took the electric out. So is it possible that, you know, raptors will be able to climb electric fences when they're out? Or, you know, uh, just normal fences? I don't know. I'm assuming if they break the fence, they break the fence. I just don't want the ridiculousnesses of, uh, or ridiculous nuances, I should say, of having, you know, a little streaky mind where to bump a concrete fence enough times to actually shatter it. And the, the, the you know, the streaky mind must be fine. Maybe, you know, we have electric fences and the dinosaurs try to break out, but they're so unhappy that they keep on trying and eventually die and kill themselves on the electric fence. Therefore, you know, there's a real issue there. You've got to make them happy or else they, you know, not only there's a chance of them breaking out, but they might actually just kill themselves. And that's a lot of money wasted. Anyway, anyway. It's not like they've listened to me before and made Jeeps destructible or anything. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, so fences, gates, and dinosaurs have a specific security rating. Now, we've seen this before. If a dinosaur's security rating is higher than the fences, it will be able to destroy the fence and then run rampant through your park. Okay. Now, is that just generally or is that when they're upset? Interesting. If a fence's security rating is higher than your dinosaurs, um, will will still try to break out, but won't be able to destroy the fences or gates. Won't be able to. Injuring themselves in the process. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Um, you'll then need to dispatch your MUVs to provide medical attention. A fence never outright. Oh, a fence will never outright kill a dinosaur, but can cause them harm. Okay. Gates can also be attacked and broken, and broken gates won't close properly, making escape easy for any prehistoric animal looking to get out. You know, that's it. I don't even need to say anything. I just need to read this, because <laughs> everything I say pops up. Uh, electric fences will act as an extra deterrent against attacks, but they also need additional power in order to deliver an electric shock. If they don't have power, they will still act as a regular fence, but with a lower security rating than a fully powered fence. Velociraptors and Dilophosaurus won't climb electrified fences, but will instead attack the fences directly using their heads or bodies. If the fence loses power, they may try to climb it. There you go. I don't even need to talk. It tells me everything. Um, aviaries. Here we go. Flying reptiles will be housed in aviaries. These dome structures are modified and can be linked together, letting you build unique and dynamic enclosures. Hatcheries and viewing galleries are attached to the walls at predetermined points. You will need at least one hatchery per aviary enclosure. So your ranger teams can perform their ranger scans 
and report back to you about your flying reptiles. It's interesting. So I'm assuming, I mean, we're having a look at this picture. This must be the hatchery that you need to attach to it. Okay. And that's how they scan because they can't go into the enclosures or the lagoons. They have to scan the hatchery, which then scans the lagoon or aviary, I think. Multiple flying reptiles can live inside a single aviary but you'll need to make sure they have enough space for their territories. Like with land animals, they also have wants and needs that have to be met in order to make them comfortable. You can modify the aviary interiors with group types and plants. There you go, another green room. And you'll find a fish feeder or two in order, or you'll need a fish feeder or two to keep uh, them fed. Unhappy flying reptiles might try to escape by sm hey, smashing through the domed ceiling. Okay, so we're going to see um, charts appear once Evolution 2 is out. Basically, people will put together, I'm sure, not me, but other people will, they'll put together like what um, flying reptiles go together and how big the Averys need to be. You'll see that again with lagoons. And we had that a bit with um, Evolution 1. You had like all the dinosaurs that could go together and then dinosaurs that couldn't. A new feature of the Averys is that guided tours can now pass through them. Oh, brilliant. Um, but uh, can we get a boat tour for the lagoon? That'd be sweet. Um, that's something I mentioned back, you know, uh, when I played J-Park. I was like, oh, you got the tour vehicles. But imagine you got the boat from Jurassic Park 3 and you made a tour. That'd be so cool. Um, provided that they are, there are entry and exit gates attached to the sides. This will provide your guests with a more up close and personal view of your flying reptiles and is sure to leave them awestruck. That's cool. Nice. More stuff like that. Uh, I was going to say Ludia. <laughs> Frontier. Uh, lagoons. Lagoons are a new modular aquatic habitat. So basically like the same as um, Avery's uh, that will house your marine reptiles. Like with Avery's, lagoons are modular and can be expanded at preset points. Hatcheries and viewing galleries are attached to the lagoon walls at predetermined points and your ranger teams will link up with the hatchery to perform ranger scans of marine reptiles. You will need at least one hatchery per lagoon in order to know your marine reptiles wants and needs. Because I got the confused. I was trying, I put like one of those ranger points near the lagoon to see if they could scan it that way. But no, they scan the, the hatchery. You're gonna, which to me feels like just that they're, they're, they're patching it up. It's, you know, just they didn't think about it like, ah, it's kind of hatchery. <laughs> uh, your lagoons can't be entered by guided tours, but monorails can pass over them. Okay. For increased dinosaur visibility. I guess it's a workaround. Uh, the viewing galleries can be lowered below the water so your guests can see the marine reptiles up close in the natural element. Attach a shark feeder to any lagoon housing a large marine reptile like the Mosasaur to give your guests a spectacular sight around feeding time. Smaller marine reptiles are happy with fish, so don't forget to add a fish feeder so they have a source of food. Hungry marine reptiles won't be able to escape, but they will die of hunger if left without food for too long. So there you go. Basically... The only problem with marine reptiles is that if you don't feed them, they die because they can't break out and maybe they'll attack each other if they're angry, but there's not really much of a problem. Like the Averys have more so. Uh, a single lagoon can house several marine reptiles, but depending on the species, it may be a good idea to keep some of them separated. Large marine reptiles might just try to eat the smaller ones. Now that you know more about the different enclosure types of Just World Evo Evolution 2, you're well equipped to manage a park that runs smoothly and hopefully without incident. These additional enclosures and animals will offer you your parks new opportunities and new challenges. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below below. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, a little bit more insight. Nothing too crazy. Uh, another closer look at that mystery marine reptile that they're really keeping shtum. Um, I would say maybe it's the leads like these. It doesn't look like it. And they've already said that they have only got things to say about marine reptiles. And leads like these was a fish, not a reptile. Uh, but just a short one today. Uh, I didn't expect to be recording. Voice is terrible or throat's terrible. I've barely spoken anything today. Had to take Strepsil to get this video out. Hey! But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you're hyped for Dress of World Evolution 2. Uh, we've got something special coming this weekend. Don't worry. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, but yeah, I'm, we're, I've got some plans to sort of celebrate the end of Dress of World Evolution uh, because it really is. No one's, I don't think anyone's going to go back to it. Dress of World Evolution 2 is a better version of Evolution. And we've got everything that the DLCs gave us and more. 
And who knows, they're definitely going to put DLC in this game. I, there will be a Dominion DLC, we can pretty much guarantee that. Um, and I'm really excited for it. And of course, we'll cover it on the channel all in extensive detail. And I cannot wait. It's going to be loads of fun. Hopefully, you'll be there to uh, to see it as well. And if you enjoyed this video, guys, I've already said it before. Leave a like. And until next time, I'll see you cuties later. Oh, bye-bye.